Anyway, uh, John, e John Evans, one of the founding members of Love in Action. Um, he is now half, he is, he is still Christian, um, but he said that in 30 years in the XK Ministries, he saw nothing but broken and shattered lives. This is Alan Chambers. He's the current president of Exodus International. In a couple of years, he was addressing the group of XK men in Phoenix. And he said, and then I came to a place where I realized, you know what? God calls us as Christians to a life of denial. I love that today. I realize that I do live a life of denial. Not denial of who I used to be, not denial of who I could be today, but I deny what comes naturally to me. And so every single morning, this is a ritual for me. I wake up and I say, dear Lord, I can't make it today without you. I choose to deny what comes naturally to me. I choose to submit my will to the Lordship of your Son, Jesus Christ, and I choose better. What's really happening here is that questions over homosexuality. Um, do we ordain, do we ordain uh, gay clergy? Do we recognize same-sex unions? Do we allow openly gay people into our churches? Um, it's changing the church. It's changing modern Christianity. You're seeing this in the Anglican community. You're seeing it with Episcopalians, with Lutherans. Um, basically, with mainline Protestant churches, they're splitting in half over these questions, over these issues. What the pattern is, is that the, the national denomination will take some kind of stance that is more affirming or more accepting of homosexuality. And what happens is, is that the conservative members will get pissed off, and then they'll go and join a more conservative denomination. Uh, so we're seeing, really, how gays are changing the church, not the other way around. Of course, that raises questions. What about the Bible? Because the people who are leaving the churches are saying, well, the Bible is very clear about homosexuality. God condemns it. That's it. Case closed. And so there are a couple of ways of looking at this issue, and I can't really talk about x programs without addressing the Bible. Uh, this next part comes from the Brick Testament. Have you guys seen the Brick Testament? Uh, basically, this guy took uh, uh, passages from the Bible, and he took Legos, and he uh, kind of put the stories of the Bible together from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And I got permission from Reverend Smith to use these pictures in my presentation. He was very happy to oblige. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah. How many of you have heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? This is like the big story, right? Let me go through it well, with you guys. So again, this is one side of the issue. This is the side that says the Bible condemns homosexuality. So the story goes like this. Two angels show up, and they come to Lot. And Lot says, hey, angels, why don't you come back to my house and spend the night? So Lot takes them back to his house, and I think that's Lego meat, I'm not sure. <laughs> Lot takes them back to his house, and when nightfall comes, a bunch of people gather outside of Lot's house, and they're pissed off, and they're angry, and they're saying, hey, who are these strangers you brought into your house? Bring them outside so that we can rape them. And uh, Lot says, hey, guys, don't be evil. Um, you know, these are my visitors, you need to respect them. Uh, the crowd turns on Lot. At the last minute, the angels pull Lot back inside of his house, and he's safe. The next morning, the angels take Lot, Lot's wife, and his two daughters outside of the city, and they warn them that God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. They need to get out, and they need to get out now. So God uh, destroys the cities. God, and uh, that's the uh, aftermath. <laughs> Lot's wife turns around. And as she does so, she's turned to a pillar of salt. So it's only Lot and his daughters who are left. Uh, and then you have passages like Leviticus 18 that says, Do not lie with men as one lies with a woman. That is the testimony. Um, so these are, kind of, these are the scriptures that are used to justify this idea that God condemns, or that the Bible condemns homosexuality. Um, but there's the other side to it, in that at the very same paragraph, um, you're commanded not to have sex with a woman who's on a period. And we're not exactly enforcing that rule right now, are we? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't appear in the uh, Ten Commandments. Uh, God doesn't say anything about homosexuality there. Jesus, um, <laughs> about homosexuality, this is an exact quote. Nothing. <laughs> um, what's going on is that there's this contracts and that God doesn't seem very concerned about homosexuality in the Bible. He seems more concerned with how you treat the poor and economic injustices. I mean, just by uh, the count of verses alone, um, we see what God's real interest is. So the other side says, well, look at this. Maybe the clue is in this phrase, as one lies with a woman. This idea 
that when a man has sex with another man, that other man takes a passive role. He is being penetrated. And that's not a man's job. A man's job is to penetrate. It is the woman's job to be penetrated. The problem, it seems, with homosexuality in the Bible is not about homosexuality. It's about gender roles. It's about a man becoming a woman, a man giving up his superior position and becoming female, becoming inferior. Really, the Bible doesn't have a problem with homosexuality. The Bible has a problem with women. And you will see that, in fact, in the exact same story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, I left out some parts earlier, and uh, now we're coming back. So here's this part where uh, the mob is outside, and they're storming Lot's house. Lot says, hey, guys, please don't be evil. Don't rape these angels. Rape my two virgin daughters instead. Don't be evil. Rape my two virgin daughters <laughs> instead. Now this raises another interesting issue in the story. Um, if the men in the crowd were gay, why would Lot offer up his daughters to them? So anyway, after God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Lot and his daughters, they're off in the mountains together. And his daughters realize that there is not a man there to help them uh, continue the bloodline. So they say, hey, well, let's get dad drunk and have sex with him so that we can continue our bloodline. So they get Lot drunk, and I think that's a Lego wine bottle. <laughs> and uh, the daughters. <laughs> you will never look at Legos the same. <laughs> and then the next night, it's daughter daughter number two's turn. So uh, they get him drunk again, and uh, daughter number two. <laughs> then he goes off and has sex. So apparently, raping men is bad, but raping women and having incestual sex with your daughters is okay. Same story from the Bible. Anyway, this is it the sin against nature? This is another argument that you'll find from a lot of uh, conservatives. Well, it really turns out that homosexuality is quite common in the animal kingdom. 1,500 species, at least, have been documented um, having uh, same-sex um, sex. Um, in fact, in giraffes, it's been documented that um, homosexual acts are more common than heterosexual. But the question is, why should we care about this? Right? This is the big picture issue stuff. Okay? And this is where everyone gets pissed off. Okay? One of the conferences that I attended, I, I told you earlier about the conferences that are geared for uh, straight Christians trying to learn how to deal with this issue. Um, it's called Love One Out. It's put on by Exodus International. And it used to be put on by Focus on the Family until Focus went bankrupt trying to outlaw gay marriage. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> Um, some of the conference sessions that they had were helping straight Christians reach out to friends or family members. What do you do when you, you don't know what to say? How do I reach out to uh, a gay family member? How do I be supportive and still show you know, um, a biblical view of this sin? Um, so there were those conference sessions. But then there was this session called Straight Thinking on Gay Marriage, which distributed these pamphlets, Why Not Gay Marriage? And it was filled with all of these studies and statistics how same-sex unions are a really bad idea. And society has never experimented with this before, and we should never do it. And same-sex unions don't last, and same-sex unions are miserable. And then there was another uh, session called Teaching Captivity, about the pro-gay agenda in your school. And that um, tells parents what to look out for. If any of these things show up in your public school, it is a sign that your school is becoming too gay friendly. And they're distributing letters to, pay to parents all over the country. And they're having parents send these letters to superintendents and the school principals to have them impose AIDS and sex ed programs in public schools. Have you heard of the Day of Silence? Who's heard of the Day of Silence? Uh, this is a day where high school and some college students will not speak for an entire day to represent the silence that revolves around violence um, against gays and lesbians. Exodus International launched their own day called Day of Truth, uh, which they also run the same day as Day of Silence every year now, where they have Christian students pass out pamphlets uh, telling people the biblical truth about homosexuality. 